Hello? Oh, hey, is this Make It For Less from the YouTube channel Make It For Less? Yes, indeed. What's up? Awesome. What are you doing for Valentine's Day? Well, wow. I'm really flattered, but I do have a girlfriend. Sorry. No, I didn't mean like that. I meant for your partner. Oh, no, nothing really. Okay, good. I mean, not good because you should care for your partner, but good as in I have a project idea that I need your help with. Okay, have you ever heard of the love box? Love box? Like the thing in the car? Oh, no, you mean the little thing that shows pictures. Yeah, yeah, it's that little box that's like way overpriced and comes with a subscription fee, but all it really is is a screen that displays photos. Yeah, so I'm thinking we make that, but for less. Um, let me see. Yeah, no, I don't think I'm too busy. Yeah, so if I do the 3D design and the electronics, you handle the programming, and then we like put it all together. Does that work for you? That sounds like a plan to me. Awesome. I'll get to work. That was the conversation me and Thomas from the YouTube channel Mellow Labs had a few weeks ago. I really liked the idea, and we're sure that we could recreate the device for much less than the $170 it's currently priced at. First things first, I wanted to figure out what kind of hardware we were going to end up using. I knew the final product would need to communicate over the internet, so that cuts out anything that doesn't have Wi-Fi capabilities. Next up, we were going to need a display. A display could be added to any microcontroller, but it's probably easier if it's built in. That leaves the choice between these two. These are both variations of the CYD, or cheap yellow display, that has been recently popularized by the YouTuber Brian Lowe. Both devices have built-in screens, light sensors, SD card readers, and RGB LEDs. They are also both powered by the ESP32 microcontroller. For those who don't know it, the ESP32 is an awesome and super powerful device that can be programmed just like a regular Arduino, but also has the ability to connect to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It's quickly becoming my microcontroller of choice since it's about the same price and sometimes even cheaper than other Arduinos and has extra functionality. I don't want to play with you anymore. Okay, now back to the matter at hand. Really the big difference between these two is the size of the screen. And since there's really no difference otherwise, I just went with the bigger one. With that settled, I let Mello know and he picked up the same one. Mello got started on his, um, design process. And I got started on the code. Getting something to show on the screen was super easy. I use the TFT ESPI library, which makes it really easy to connect almost any TFT display with almost any microcontroller. With that figured out, the next thing I needed to work on was getting it to talk over the internet. Okay, class, settle down now. We're gonna get started learning about the HTT protocol and properly formatting our request headers. Ugh. Hey, it's me, your pal, Chad Kuhlman, and I'm here to explain everything so that you don't get bored to death. Surprisingly, it's pretty complex to get something to talk over the internet. There's all these things like security and data privacy, lame stuff like that. The biggest issue we're facing is that without some questionable reconfiguring of our home network, there's no way somebody from the outside is going to be able to connect in to our device. What we can do, however, is have our device reach out into the internet and ask for information. This is much safer as we know what we're connecting to and what kind of data they're going to be sending us. So what we're going to do is set up a server somewhere out on the internet outside of our home network and handle all of our communication through that. The server will be set up to handle requests in a safe way, so we don't have to compromise our network. Alright, well I've got an appointment to go skydiving with sharks, so I'm going to turn it back over to Make It For Less for the rest of the explanation. Thanks Chad, have fun with the sky sharks. Well, it sounds like Chad gave you the big picture, so let me fill you in on some of the details. We're going to set up the server we need with a service called Render. They provide free hosting for internet connected apps, which is perfect for our purposes. The server app is written in Python and serves up a page that uses HTML and CSS to look nice and JavaScript to handle getting the pictures and making sure it will fit on our screen. Quick note if you can't understand my JavaScript code, I can't either. JavaScript was created either by God to test developers' faith or the devil to torture them. Either way, once I had cried enough that the JavaScript felt bad and fixed itself, I closed the file and hoped to never look at it again. With the web server done, I just had to write a bit more code to get the device to get the pictures from the server and show it on the screen. Oh, and it also works with GIFs. 
There will be more detailed instructions with the project documentation linked in the description down below. You know the description, right? The one right under the like and subscribe buttons? Yeah, the buttons that let you like and subscribe, the description is just below that. I got all the coding done just in time for Mello to send me the files for the 3D printed case. If you want to see more of his design process, make sure you check out his video. I grabbed the model, sliced it up, and sent it to my 3D printer. With all the printing done, I was ready to assemble. Unfortunately, I procrastinated quite a bit, and the awesome design Thomas came up with required some heat set inserts and a micro USB breakout board. I couldn't get those parts in time for the video, so I had to do a few modifications. <laughs> An important note before final assembly, the servo needs to be soldered to power and ground on the micro USB connector, and the signal wire needs to be soldered to GPIO 21. I had to use a bit of hot glue to hold everything down since I did not have screws, but in spite of that, the whole thing came together beautifully. Also important to mention, Mello designed the heart to be attached to one of the servo horns that comes with the servo, but really, you can attach anything you want. I added in just a bit more code to move the servos when a picture is available, and to use the light sensor to detect when the lid gets taken off. With that done, I had an awesome finished gift from my girlfriend this Valentine's Day. Thomas finished his up as well, and we sent a few images back and forth to confirm everything was working. One final thing before wrapping up, for the next 24 hours my device will be live at the link below and you can send pictures and gifts. Mel and I will be doing a live stream on Sunday, February 18th at 11am MST to talk about the project and present some of our favorite images that we received. I want to give a special shout out to my supporters on Patreon, Pam, Christian, and Robin. And new since my last video, Joshua! <laughs> if you want to support me and my future projects, Patreon is currently the best place to do it. If you like this video, leave a like down below and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. I hope you have a good one, and I'll see you next time here on Make It For Less.